The following show features episodic breakdowns of jackass, either performed by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. For your safety, avoid listening to this podcast at all times. Hi, I'm Mikey Aaronworth. I'm Jason Wellwood. And I'm Chris Aaronworth. Welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass. It's the podcast where we're on a path of destruction through every single episode of Jackass. We're three lifelong fans of the show reliving the belly laughs, bad ideas, and broken bones. Today, we got something special for you guys. For all the fans out there, you know, we're, we're always doing these throwbacks. We're going back to this. We're going back to that. We have these new options right now. Jackass is kind of uh, doing a little bit of a relaunch, you know? There's new episodes mm-hmm. coming out. There's new ideas, new things. So we are doing Shark Week. 2.0 2.0 uh this is this is big chris because when we first started doing the podcast uh shark week i think was kind of like just coming around right i mean it was it was a few months after we had started but oh. shark week with with no no no, not the beginning of shark i thought week you, I thought you, meant, like no, no, I thought you shark meant coming week. around like it was finally starting to get decent i'm like how fucking dare oh, you no god no shark week is always amazing <laughs> um uh but this one uh jackass 1.0 shark week a lot of people i think may have missed it especially new fans to jackass and a lot of the people who listen to this podcast obviously are lifelong fans of jackass but we would be kidding ourselves if there weren't an entire new generation of jackass brought on in part by the shark week introduction to jackass the the new movie etc etc chris for those who maybe missed shark week 1.0 give us a little bit of a summary of maybe your your favorite moments and uh and then the incident with poopies because this shark week 2.0 has a major center around what happened to him last year yeah it's it was interesting because it it did come out like when we were still pretty fresh with this podcast and like mm-hmm. literally my favorite thing every single year for the past, as long as I can remember, I watched every single Shark Week episode. So last year when I found out there was a Jackass and Shark Week crossover, it was like, it's like this world is designed for me. Like I am the center of the universe. <laughs> they are making my two favorite things come together. I was so excited. And it was it was the best it was the best shark crossover with anything since Sharknado. And I think I'll say it. I'll put my, my name on the line and say <laughs> Shark and Jackass is the best shark crossover since Sharknado. And I don't want to hear the hate mail. And you know what? In fact, fuck it. Send it my way. I don't give a fuck anymore. I, you get enough of it, I'm sure. I do. It's it's really <laughs> exhausting to sift through. You guys don't understand. Mikey calls me almost every day. Did you see what this guy said about me? Do you see what this guy said about me? I, I have to console my brother, even though he's a bit of a dork. I thought all the beating up I did on him earlier on in his life would have hardened him a little bit, but apparently uh, he can't handle I'm the still, internet. I'm still 90% sure. I'm still 90% sure. Okay, first of all, I need to comment on that, but I'm still 90% sure that uh, uh, you're the one who are creating all these fake profiles and sending me hate mail because <laughs> they all have zero followers and they f- and 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 you're following all of them. So I don't know what that's about. Secondly, I have a soft spot for the internet. Chris, you're the guy who messages me like every day. Like, did you hear about what they're trying to do? The holiday they're trying to change. Mother's Day is not Mother's Day anymore. It's birth parent. Like you, you, you always say how much you fucking hate social media and the internet. And you're like, and and what do you do? about it your antidote to that is by scrolling back through instagram and no. finding things to piss no, you off no it's creating yes. a bunch of fake yes. accounts and attacking those people that are pissing and me attacking off attacking the <laughs> there you go chris chris has <laughs> as many russian bots as russia does but they're just all under and his russian control. russian mail order brides too i got some of those as well yes yeah 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 so did uh so did rab rab himself from an earlier episode of evil of bam so sorry chris uh give us a little summary of uh, of, of shark Cold yeah I, I will but like it seems a little awkward because we haven't even heard Jay say anything yet. So before I continue, Jay, just say hello so the audience knows you're there, please. Wait, wait. what was that earlier about beating off on your brother makes him hard or something like that? <laughs> That's not fair. <important. laughs> Never mind. Jay, did you take a break because you heard him say that and you started to beat off? You just muted your mic and you're like, I got to get something out of this right now. No, I was, I was just thinking pensively. Yeah. Hmm. To myself. All right. Well, that's enough about you. Anyways, back to me. (laughs) Um, So basically. (laughs) Center of the universe over here. (laughs) I I am. It's all created for me. The. um, Yeah. So that was actually the first time I've ever seen poopies at all. And I remember coming Mm. onto the podcast. We recorded like the day after I watched that episode, just doing one of our regular episodes and saying, you guys are going to be absolutely fucking blown away by that guy. Poopies. He's like perfect for the show. I I might have described him as like Chris Pontius's. uh, older slightly more washed up brother kind of like i am to mikey you know what i mean like just a little bit more weathered been Uh through the shit you know went a little harder 
you know, not not uh-huh. as handsome, but still got that boyish good looks, you know. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, back to what I was saying is with with this episode, it was really cool because you got to see them actually doing stunts. And what I really liked about it was that it was like Discovery Channel actually gave Jackass the reins, which became mm-hmm. very evident as it went on because the stunts were getting very aggressive, much more, much mm-hmm. unlike anything I've ever seen on shark week before shark week. you know it's all about nature it's all about this um and in recent times shark week shark week when i was growing up was all about like making scary sharks now it's about like showing how uh you know how they're actually not bad for people and help with the preservation of sharks so yeah this this time around it was just really cool to see um poopies in general at the end of it as as most of you guys would obviously know tries to jump over a pool of sharks Mm-hmm. Uh, and ends up getting bitten by a shark and still to this day he's like has really bad nerve damage in his hand and he's his doing rehab and stuff up. yeah so it was a really good if you haven't seen it I really suggest you go back and watch it the spoiler first, alert first, especially uh, season, after yeah. seeing this one you'll really appreciate the first one yeah fair fair yeah no man it's nuts like watching that footage back of him coming out of the water and the bloody wrist just like fucking holes in the fucking veins man he was losing so much blood I Pontius, like when he when he says it's the scariest thing they ever they ever saw um, in all their years doing Jackass, like I immediately just thought, how like at, my first thought was like really like that a shark attack? But then like you see the result of oh, what man. a shark attack looks like, you're like okay, I get it now. Yeah, like that was a scary amount of blood. That was like when they when they put him on the boat and they the two uh, helpers like the handlers haul him off. He's like almost you look at his face, he's like, almost fucking passing out. You can tell he's not. You know, he's just he's, barely he's keeping clearly it in, in shock. And yeah. actually, it, it's funny, though, because the intro to this episode and, and we're going to do what we normally do on the podcast is go stunt by stunt and break it all down for you guys. We're going to be breaking this one into two episodes uh, because, as it turns out, we can't talk about a half hour's worth of content in less than an hour. So uh, bear with us. But we're going to split it up into two weeks. More content for you guys. Uh, we found that that's kind of the formula that works. And we've heard back from you. And and, yeah. and it seems that that you're the same. But the we're intro, also not very good at our jobs. So that's true. That no, no. Plays into uh, of it course well. not. Of course, we're not we're not good at our jobs that's Mm -hmm. a given that's a given um the intro jay i found really funny because it's johnny knoxville kind of giving a little recap of what happened uh in the previous shark week and 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 throwing to the camera to tell what's about to happen and when he talks about poopy's shark bite he's not the one to get like sentimental you mentioned it's pontius who comes on he's like it was the scariest moment in jackass history and i think that's because johnny knoxville as we've learned as fans of jackass is not afraid of death and is hardly afraid of in- injury he's the only guy i think in the crew who's like allowed to joke about this because poopies is still clearly shaken up by the by the shark attack do you, do you uh, think and that? johnny knox chris every time they cut to him he he's about to cry i this will be this will be a running thing when we when we talk about the different stunts I was almost uncomfortable at how much he seemed to be leaning away from the fact that he was going to have to get back into the water with the sharks at some point. I, I think that, that, that see, everything about this, this like 2.0 to me, was the first time I've ever seen a jackass thing in general seem like it was very scripted and very staged. Like, poopies, if you actually know what's going on, and I would love to get the opportunity to like maybe like ask him these questions personally, or like, you know, find, get a little bit more insight onto it, but He's been surfing ever since. And they're playing it like he hasn't been in the water since. And when he goes in, like, you could tell when they're, like, doing the video cuts where it's like, wow, this is getting a little intense for me. And then, you know, other times he's, like, super chill. Like, to me, it seems like they really played off that and they really made it seem like I don't think he was as scared to go back in as as they were selling on the show on purpose. They, they, well, they need I the guess, drama. For context, though, he's been on. I've seen him on a few. And I know you've seen him on the on podcasts as well saying that the one thing he didn't ever want to do again was was swim with sharks now unless it's the long like never break kayfabe the long play of of playing that up so shark week 2.0 comes off better he seemed pretty sincere there you know he 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 kind of like cracks a little bit and almost breaks down into tears when he's on on wild ride he breaks down into tears i think two or three times over the course of shark week 2.0 there were moments in the interview uh when when it's kind of like just the jackass crew talking and johnny's like oh and he's gonna go back in the water and 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 
Poopy's literally just looks away from him and he's like looking to the right. He's like, well, look, if I'm if I'm not in a cage, I'm not going back in and like not in a Poopy's character kind of way. And Johnny, I Johnny, I had the vibe that he was frustrated with Poopy's every time this happened because he's looking at Poopy's. He's like, well, Poopy's, I don't think that's the I don't think like he's he's like, no, 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 we're getting you in the water. It felt like peer pressure in the worst form at some points. Jay, where, where do you fall in this? I think that dude was just really scared and how could you blame yeah. him? I, I don't yeah. think there's any like, I don't, I, I can't read too much into it because yeah, I agree with you that like Knoxville's trying to play the Knoxville part and he plays it well, but you gotta, you gotta put pressure on because that's what the jackass environment is all about. And I think we talked about this in a previous episode. Don't mistake their peer pressure for the wrong thing. I think that's their way of showing love to the guys. Yeah. It's like, Hey, yeah. we do this. This is what we do. This is our environment. Um, and us pressuring you is our way. Like we do care. We want you to be comfortable so you can get back in there and start surfing again. Like, but we're going to be dicks about it because that's what we do to each other, you know? Um, and in a way, if poopies wanted to be a part of the crew, I think now more than ever, that's proof right there. Knoxville's putting the pressure on you. He's trying to get you back out there. He wants you to do stuff for the camera. Not because he's just trying to make big bucks off you or something. It's because he he cares about him. You know, I mm-hmm. at least that's how I'm reading into it. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Did you guys notice in the in you know this is still kind of dealing with the intro like like the Johnny Knoxville intro of, of Shark Week and kind of getting our impressions out there as well. But they the sh- they showed the the footage of Poopy's wakeboarding over the jump in the Fonzie jacket because obviously notoriously Fonzie's the one who jumped the shark. That's where that saying came from. Um, and you can hear the person behind the camera. I don't know if it's Steve-O. I don't know who it is. Steve-O, who's notably absent in Shark Week 2.0. He's just like, you can hear him. He's like, yeah, Poopy. Oh, like, like it's immediately yeah. just like, he's yeah, so scary. amped, amped, amped. And then Poopy's misses the jump. And he's just like everything. It's just a complete 180. And yeah. the vibe oh changes immediately. And it's it happens like, so fast, man. Like, so fast. The minute he's in the water, he's swarmed. There's like shark fins around him everywhere. It's uh, yeah. pretty gnarly. Like, Fucking the way he talks about it too, like he says the shark's got his arm and he feels like if he even moves mm-hmm. an inch or tries to pull away, his arm's just gonna be fucking gone. Like it's terrifying. You yeah. Know? Well let's let's before I wonder we get if they into... found a way to test, like like if they found a way to test like oh, how shut like, the fuck a bite up. Would feel. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. We'll have, we'll have plenty of time to break down the actual beat by beat because they do that, uh, uh, right after the intro. But, uh, what did you guys think of the, the intro? Not Johnny Knoxville's intro, but the typical, like, Hey, this is Jackass. Bing, yeah. bang, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Intro of, uh, of this. Uh, uh Chris, yeah, you want to, you want to break down what happens? Yeah. Well, I thought what you asked me what I think about it. I thought enough that I was just going to skip right over and get right to the, the actual Shark Week stuff. But I mean, they're running on the beach. They get hit with a bunch of slimy paint stuff. Fish you got to see some nice slow motion of Zach ass running, which that was probably my highlight, to be honest, in a weird <laughs> way. Um, and man, and we man, he just he's just got that. He had a good smile. We man looked like he was like he was about it this time. Like if we're Chris, talking the, the I other totally thing. I totally agree with you right? on this. Yeah. Like we're like, is he is he kind of checked out? Like he seemed like he was like back in good spirits. Everything's <laughs> good. So I was really happy to see that. Great I think vibes. He, he just needed man. some vitamin D. You know, that could be it. Out that could sun, be it. Having fun with the boys. Little. Little swimsuit, rubber ducky, whatever you want, you know, or or a, or a, a little baby bull shark, shark fin. He should have <laughs> had one of those fucking <laughs> rubber ducky inflatable tubes around the waist. You know what I'm talking about? I think oh, that yeah, would have made 100%. the outfit. That would Don't have that would have been need. great. But Th- this one's so this is the the typical like jackass running through the smoke away from something, and this one got me wondering. Standard. Has there ever been someone in the history of humanity that has run away from danger while laughing more than Johnny Knoxville? And that's a real question. <laughs> eh, has anyone in the history of humanity run away from danger laughing more than Johnny Knoxville? I don't think there's ever been someone to do it. The Joker. Ooh, yeah, you're right. The, right. the there, real but... life villain that we deal with all the time in Gotham <laughs> City. I mean, he is just such. I mean, he's a little. Here's the thing about the Joker. Call me crazy. That guy's a little. He's a little twisted. He's a, little, a little sick bit. in the head, man. I don't know if I trust that guy. I do. I do. <laughs> of course you would, Chris. The, I get the Joker him. I get him would, on the Joker a real would level. come out in a MAGA hat and you'd be like, let's hear what the clown has to say this time. <laughs> Are you are you calling our Lord and Savior a clown? Yeah, yeah, I think I think our he's Lord the clown prince of presidential candidates. Yeah, 
All right, hey, guys. I, I feel like I'm getting the hint from this banter right here. Just, you know, not pointing any fingers at any particular points in the show. But if there was a point in the show that we could probably jump into things, it probably would be right now. So I'm just going to do you both Let's a favor. It. And we're going to jump in right now. Thank okay, you. so Poopies almost dies. And it's fucking crazy. Holy shit. But now we have the setup for our episode. It's If we didn't say it once, I'll say it one more time for you. So listen closely. Poopies wants to get back in with the sharks to get comfortable so that he can do what he loves, which is to go to the beach, to surf, to be in the ocean. That's the goal. Let's see if we can make it happen. But along the way, we're going to learn some things because science is fun. God damn it. Now, after the run down the beach in slow-mo, we get our first little, um, I guess they call them experiments in this is what they call them. Um, we're headed to a top secret location somewhere where sharks well, live. Well, before, sorry, and Jay, before, is... before we get into the experiments, we yes. should, we should take some time to talk about, like, they do a pretty big job of recapping the, the bite itself. And, and I think we would be, okay. you want to go more into that? Bit, yeah, not necessarily our interpretation of it, but when they go down beat for beat, they show never before footage. Footage that I was like, I legitimately don't know if I want to watch this. I've said this before on the podcast, like, I know that jackass has a lot to do with people getting injured, but when people are just injured in a non funny way, it, I don't like, I don't like to watch that. I don't like to watch people's heads smacking off things. I'm a big boxing fan. I don't love to see people get knocked out. And this is one where I'm like, I'm about to see a guy get swarmed by sharks and, and I'm going to be a bit uncomfortable, but more than anything, I don't want to move past this because we should focus way more on Mike, the guy who fucking saved poopy's life. Yeah. Uh, Mike's a badass. He, a badass who they don't even give a title card to. They don't mention his last name. I feel like he deserved a little bit more. Dude, like, he's like the guy, flip, the guy, superpower the guy, move to scare away all the sharks. Like that's 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 not that's like insane. I've been thinking about this. Like I have time to react. I have time to process. That is like you want to talk about a fight or flight type person. Mike is a fucking fight person. It's like now or never. You don't even have time to think. And he does like the most gangster shit in the in the yeah. game. You know what I mean? Like. You need guys like that on your team. If I was poopies, I would be paying Mike just to be my like surfing buddy, just to like hang out on a surfboard near me. You know what I mean? Man, if if poopies doesn't hire him, I'll hire. I don't even surf. I just want Mike to hang around my place in case there's <laughs> flooding in Toronto and I have to worry about well, sharks. There, coming there was out. apparently a tornado in Toronto the other day. Ooh, a shark. Well, sharks aren't far behind. Then we know that. Yeah. They're coming, man. Look at the forecast. Uh, yeah, you're right, though, Mikey. I got to point out that you are right about uh, him not getting enough recognition. I mean, for God's sakes, the fucking handler and human barbecue got more fucking recognition than <laughs> than Mike did. Uh, Mike, Mike Chris, also. Chris is looking like he doesn't remember human barbecue. Oh, Chris, I remember human, human barbecue. barbecue? What, one he of the gave human barbecue a did not tar- participate here according to the spreadsheet. So just, no, that was back when we out. yeah we I think that was a first season jackass stunt and Chris wouldn't mark his scores down in our in our master spreadsheet. I still um, the, there's uh, a big what, hole here. One of my one of my funniest uh, uh, one of the funniest moments of this of yeah. this initial part is when Mike's talking. I can't believe none of you have brought this up. Was I the only exactly. one? I, I, get, I get he's talking about something tragic, but he he says he looks at Poopy's hand and he calls it a double squirter without and just moves on as though that's not <laughs> the funniest that, thing yeah. that anyone's ever no, said. He's you like, know what the funniest like, the funnier thing was it, what? regarding the exact same thing. Poopy's he's like, I looked down on my hand and I saw blood bubbles, man. I'm like, what the hell are blood bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> Blood bubbles, <laughs> dude. That interview, That's that interview with Poopies is out. so funny because he's like, I mean, it's tragic because he's 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 crying yeah. as he's saying it, but when it, it 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 he says something at the end of the interview, he's like, but you know, I'm alive and like, I guess we learned something, man. And he looks exactly like I bet you if you if you side by side have that portion of his interview with that meme of the little kid who's being interviewed and the interviewer is like, do you miss your mom? And he's like, no. <laughs> no and he's like immediately breaks Liar. down looks exactly the same he's like he's like yeah. like to a t and of course he was swarmed by fucking sharks that's why it's like oh, he clearly God, yeah. is ptsd i think this yeah. all happened a little bit too quickly but you know he, i mean from for for me and what i would do but yeah, well they was, say uh, with trauma crazy. it's like best to like not trauma but like phobia is like it's like you address it the quicker you address it the less it has time to build up you know what i mean mm-hmm. so and i get that's the point of this that's why it's like He's been in the water. He's doing these things. And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to downplay by any stretch what happened to him in this by yeah. saying I think he was putting it on for this. I think he's actually done a lot of the recovery before Shark Week. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of the way I was trying to yeah, frame it. Like so. he's been surfing, he's been in the ocean. It might not have been beside sharks, but I don't give a fuck. I've seen a shark in the ocean, and now every single time I'm yeah. in the ocean, it's always in the back of your mind a little mm-hmm. bit. You know what I mean? If anyone knows yeah, when this was filmed, I'd love to hear it because I know that that Poopies wasn't able to surf on his own until relatively recently. So unless they filmed this in the last like three or four months, it's possible that this was his True. first step. To get, okay, to yeah, get back yeah, 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 I could be wrong there. Um, the the last thing I want to say about this little bit, and we see a lot of sharks, obviously it's Shark Week in this one, but there's an underwater view of all the sharks swimming around at one point. And like, I don't know why no one talks about this, but every shark it's showing in the video has scars like all over their body like that's just a normal thing for them like they've all just got like half their face missing yeah like they're just running around manipulating their nephews like their scar from the lion king or something like that they're just like it would suck it would suck so bad being a shark yeah that's how humans used to be that's why we're all getting soft i never was i never was i was always obviously you weren't but i mean it's just no in general it's like do you did you ever see like there's there's times now shark week where the camera is so fucking awesome it's they have like super hd quality cameras where you could actually see the parasites swimming in the eyeballs of great white sharks. Oh, Jesus. Like, as the shark's passing by, you see it swimming. You're like, holy fuck, man. Like, these things are gnarly, man. They go around. It's the animal kingdom. It's a pecking order. I was just watching the Shark Week episode as well, where they're, they're recording the sounds of the breaches. And they're to see if breaching, when the sharks are breaching, if it has effects on other sharks. So, if it's a smaller shark breaching, the big sharks come in to fucking move into the territory and scare the other ones away. If it's a whale breaching, they all of them come in. If it's like th- Chris, it's like, you're it's yelling. A- Chris, you're yelling. Sit, s- stop standing up. You're really? yelling, Chris. <laughs> fucking calm down. Queen. Take a well. breath. Jesus Christ, <laughs> Chris, you are hard as a rock and screaming at the camera My right face now. Is and it's really starting to scare. I got super hyped you up. You are there. red. You're you're very right? red right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay, why don't you take us to this top secret yeah. location you were telling us about? Top secret location somewhere where sharks live, mm. according to the subtitle. We're bringing out poopies to conquer the fear of water, as we know. We don't want them to lose that, after all. So the crew is basically just going to get together to do a bunch of stupid shit so that poopies doesn't have to. This is where our scientist friend that I mentioned earlier comes in. He gets a fucking title card. Yeah. Joe Romero. And he's a cool guy. I'm not shitting on Joe Romero. I love that name, by the way. Fucking killer name, Joe Romero. He's um, a legend in the shark world. Underwater... <laughs> Oh, 100%. Underwater Chris, calm down. Con- calm down. Conservationist. Do you, you know do you know Joe Romero? Of course. <laughs> Chris, is this is this a household name in the shark Yeah, 100%. He's like, it's the, like with uh, him Michael and Chris Schumacher Falls, and there's a guy, uh, what's this? it starts with the D, Donnie, Donnie something. Like, all these all these guys. Like It's like you get the same crew every year. And then, Donnie, you know, they Wahlberg. Different- Donnie Wahlberg is the other shark expert, and he he's, he's <sighs> all over Shark Week. Yeah. And to see Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> fight a shark would be awesome hey did you guys did you guys notice when uh they were doing kind of that title card sequence with the the top secret location uh um zach is standing next to Wee man who's sitting and zach's not that much taller than Wee man like zach is i didn't realize how oh, short no, no, zach no. was yeah and they're saying yeah. he's pushing what four, 420, 420. They said 420, 420 right yeah we we wondered yeah. what what his weight would have been back when we did the triple wedgie and uh they do mention at one point uh in the tug of war which we'll get to later that he's 420 pounds so yeah so chris earlier you called out and said i wonder how much pressure a shark bite has it's about 100 pounds of pressure at least on the shark that had bit poopies is what they're estimating here so for experiment number one this is the shark power simulator they're on the deck of the boat. They basically got like this rubber shark head and in its open mouth is this metal. It's almost kind of looks like a bear trap, except it doesn't have the sharp uh, fangs on it. It's just like straight metal on both sides. But basically Johnny Knoxville is going to put his arm in this thing, let it grab onto him and see what it feels like. But the the handler here, Joe, uh, sorry, not Joe. Uh, I already forgot the Joe Romero. name. Joe Romero, Romero over him. here. I was going to say Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan wasn't on that fucking boat. Well, the only thing, Joe, to be to be fair, what? to be fair, Joe Rogan uh, does have a lot to do with sharks because of all the uh, bull shark testosterone that he's injecting into his ass. <laughs> Yo, that <laughs> shit would be <laughs> awesome. I bet. I Holy pet. fuck, you man! You get excited fuck like about that? <laughs> Anything fucking shark related? You're just on board. <laughs> I love uh, sharks. I love it. I love how excited <laughs> you are about sharks. 
It's the best. You're making my night. All right, listen. <laughs> so he puts his arm in the bear trap. It's about one hundredth of the pressure of the shark bite. One tenth. One tenth. No, one one hundredth. I'm one going 100. with one one hundredth. It's one one hundredth. One hundred percent. Yeah, one one Jesus. hundredth. Let's take bets. I'll bet any money. I watched it like literally forty minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> There you go. I, I'm going to have to side with fucking Chris. on. Look at how excited he is. He's giddy. Come on. I'm on his side all the way. Thanks, Jay. So he puts his arm in this fucking thing, and Knoxville's like, he's really either A, selling it, or B, it actually really fucking hurt. I'm sure it fucking hurt, but like just to think that that's one one hundredth of the pressure and the amount of pain that Knoxville seems to be exhibiting here, I can only imagine. Poopies must have been in like instant shock to even just not pass out from pain. It's pretty incredible when you put it into those... Uh, terms into that perspective you know yeah. yeah it was it was cool this you know and and i don't want to tip my hand too early but i, I was a little bit disappointed by shark week 2.0 i'd had some really fun moments but this is one of those moments where it just kind of felt a little bit like filler i was like what what is the point of a trap that's one one hundredth of the bite and I know that they would have run it and like a bunch more people would have done it. I saw some behind the scenes stuff so Jasper also tested it out as well but it, this one just felt kind of like Okay, like, I don't know why we're doing this. Like, I don't know what it's trying to prove. Yeah, I don't know. You're right. You know, it, it just felt very arbitrary, especially, especially just being in the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I see what you're saying, though. Like, they probably were thinking, okay, we got to, you know, I, I think they were trying to illustrate the point of, like, it, to me, it sold what the actual bite was more so, like, more so than caring about that stunt, it showed me that holy shit okay what poopy's experienced yes this is like the extent of that so i think that's maybe what it was for but i agree as like a hey if this is gonna be like a stunt it wasn't probably maybe not necessary or or maybe as effective for in that light the, but the uh, funny move the, on from this the best the best part Sorry, about this but, one though is and this is like this is like what we what we fucking love about poopies is johnny Johnny is the guy who's putting his fist into the trap and he commissions poopies, I guess, to be next to him as like the safety guy. The last person on this planet I would want to trust with figuring out a contraption to save my life is poopies. Like yeah, his especially hand gets with, stuck in it. And, and, and poopies, one of his hands and barely works. And he's only got one hand. He's he can't figure out how to open it. I'd be like, no, get me next. I bet you Wee Man could figure this shit out. He's got those small, nimble hands. He'll be able to get his fingers in between the cracks and pry that thing open. I don't want poopies to be the one to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. I did I did not even think about that. But then one of them does say, I don't know how this thing opens, doesn't he? I think that's Poopies that says that. Yes. Yeah. When I mean, they're trying to get it off him, is that him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's so, he's there and he's he's having a good time, but he's also not the most uh, capable of figuring out a contraption. Yeah. So they bring everybody out uh, after this to a little bit deeper to the water, and already we're starting to get a little silly. This is the Knights of the Deep, I suppose. Wee Man and Dark Shark are in like this <laughs> royal, like medieval dress, all colorful, like purples and yellows and shit. And then you got Pontius in between them in a full suit of armor on the edge of a boat, like just ridiculous. You know, some ridiculous shit is about to happen. And I think this is one of the highlights for me because they, the, just because of the prop here is golden. The prop was it's great. A, a sword. A, a, sword a barracuda sword wow a barracuda sword like i'd fucking just wrapped around the base of this pole and like just the most ridiculous looking thing ever and i love that they're just gonna send him in the water and he's basically gonna go fight some sharks with the sword at this point like you know we haven't really seen any interactions with sharks yet in the episode so this being the first one i'm already thinking like like I have no frame of reference for how dangerous is this? Like, is well, this something that you can get away with with sharks? Um, I, is I can normal? explain something you know? pretty good here. So yes, go ahead. Shark uh, expert, Chris, debatable. kicking in. You, you may explain it. It's not going to be very well. We've, so we've heard you this, on this podcast before. It's, I, I agree with you, Jay, in the sense you said this was one of the highlights of this, and that's only because this whole charade of this whole royal, like the knights and all this stuff, is all because they are doing a, a bastardized version of last year's shark week because of the dangers that okay. happen. It's almost like they're not allowed to do yeah. as much dangerous stuff. So it's very common for divers, especially with these reef sharks to be swimming with chain mail. So they're probably like, okay, guys, you could go with sharks this time. It's either needs to be in a cage or chain mail because discovery channel does not take risks like jackass does and things like that. And I think I'm, I was actually surprised they allowed them to do a second one. I think the jackass cast members were surprised they were getting signed yeah. on to do another one. Steve will even mentioned that. So I loved how they creatively found a way to kind of twist that into 
this in a fun way that was actually enjoyable to watch opposed to just seeming like a lamer version of what they've already done. It, it, I, I'm glad you said that, Chris, because I got that vibe that this one felt it felt like there was there, was, you know, in, in this stunt, they put a barracuda wrapped around an instrument. It felt like all their stunts had nerf wrapped around them like it just felt yeah. so dumbed down and i think that was part of the disappointment we're used to jackass trying to go bigger and better so it's so weird to see them have to pump the brakes and to see a very clear directive coming mm-hmm. from behind the scenes to say you guys need to talk about how nice sharks are because you kind of fucked us over that's our whole thesis and one of your guys got attacked by a shark last year you got to go make peace with them because that's what that's what our vibe is now like you mentioned chris it used to be how scary are sharks and now it's how great are sharks well Um, even in last year's thing i I kind of got sidetracked when you're asking me my favorite part about last year's episode the day after poopy shark attack they sent the boys to go out and swim with those same sharks uh, as like a point to prove like and they came back and they're like, dude, I, like they get a call. Like Steve also was talking about it on his podcast. He gets a call. It's like, you mean we, we're going back out there with the, the exact same area? Like, are you guys fucked? Like, what the hell is going on? And they were very clearly like, hey, guys, like, we just want to say, like, we're the idiots here. We're the jackasses. The sharks had no, nothing to fall. We want to prove this. We want to become friends. We want to make peace. We yeah. want to bury the, you know, end the beef with the sharks. So, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, I don't know if it, that's as much of. The narrative is like, I, I do genuinely think they believe that stuff. Like, I think these guys, especially Steve-O or Pontius, uh, uh, almost all of them been involved with wildlife. So they, they, they really do have that respect for them. Well, did you know Pontius, Pontius really mentioned Pontius is, is, is one of the main producers of Shark Week 2.0 and he's got his hands fucking all over it. He's, he's always there either on camera, behind the camera, or even in the water with all the stunts going on. And I agree. He's, you know, he's the wild boy and wild boys have a respect for nature. And I think he did want to kind of set the record straight there. But uh, and Jay, who's wild in the wild boys? <laughs> Other than you, Chris, nobody. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. the, the biggest takeaway from this stunt is Johnny Knoxville's tits. Did you see those things? Gorgeous. I did not see those tits. Gorgeous. He's wearing them. them don't disrespect me. them by calling them tits. Those are pecs, man. The, I don't know. I I think they're called tits. The internet is calling them tits, and I agree. And they're pecs. They're great. Oh, they're strong. The internet. They're strong. They're great. They're gorgeous. The guy's the guy's still in in peak shake. Everyone's talking about uh, 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 Tom Cruise and Top Gun Maverick these days. Never mind that. Yep. I think I think mm-hmm. we talk about how Johnny Knoxville is still in peak physical condition as well. That's what I was thinking. I don't know. Like, people are disrespecting there, right? him because like that that pisses me yeah. off, man. Fuck you, internet people. No, they're saying I can get my fake accounts to go fucking attack him now. They're saying tits in an endearing way, like they like it. They're attracted to it. It's not. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But yeah. It's, they're pecs. Like sure, they were formed. Sure. They were chiseled. Sure. Uh, Chris and his semantics. It's fine. They're 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 giving him a compliment. They're giving him a compliment. Good. Did you guys catch that moment though when they're uh, down there doing their medieval dragon fighting? And uh, Knoxville says into the walkie-talkie because this is a common theme, by the way, throughout the episode is that they're communicating with the guys, whoever's in the water and on the boat with walkie-talkies. So there's a lot of that in here. Um, but Knoxville says, um, "Yeah, we want to chum poopies up and send them down there to swim with the sharks." And poopies on the boat says. No, last time I did that, I got bit. And he's dressed up as a jester, so he's kind of doing a little dance as he's saying it. But I'm just thinking, the way he says it, it's like his survival instinct kicks in. Like, his brain hears what Knoxville is saying, and it's like automatic response. He's out there to conquer his fear. He knows this, but even so, he's so traumatized. His brain's just like, "Uh uh-uh, fuck that. You know, it's just straight out denial. I agree. I think I think he was doing this the whole time. I I do. I I really think he was. I don't think he believed he was going to have to get back into the water until he he did finally. Could this be could this be my new my Shark Week version of like my poopies version of the Bulls moment where you guys are going to be bringing this back to haunt me forever when I get proven wrong by the end of the episode? It could be. Fuck. Um, other, yeah, dude, otherwise, crazy, what did you guys think of this stunt? Like, you know, it's, it's Pontius down there, the image of him with a barracuda sword and two, two, uh, uh, sharks clamp onto it. What did you think ap- apart from the pageantry of it? You know, uh, Knoxville is the king. Pontius is the knight. Wee man is the queen. Dark shark is the prince and poopies is as the jester. W- yeah. w- did this land for you beyond that? Like once it actually, the sharks were introduced. Mm, yeah. I've seen all this. Yeah, so many it felt, times. It felt it's a little not like, run of the mill. Sadly, this was maybe my favorite part of this whole thing, which is not to say that you know that's not a compliment by mm. any stretch. You know what I mean? Like, like the pageantry was good. I like how they were creative enough to take something being nerfed, as you said, Mikey, and 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 
misdirect us, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. I kind of saw past it because I, I'm a shark expert. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> it is interesting <laughs> to see the amount of strength that a shark does possess as they're tugging on the end of that sword, though, and just ripping the meat off of it. It's You see Pontius, like, he's keeping his balance pretty good. I mean, you're underwater. I guess it's a little different, but you know what I mean? Like, he's he's getting jerked around, and there's just such force there, but there is the point where they surface, and they're back on the boat, and they show that pole. I mean, that thing is just fucking clean. There's not any blood or meat on there nothing to be seen there's in fact there's a couple of shark teeth embedded in the pole they fucking just destroyed that thing like sharks man when they're hungry you can see why they're so vicious it's uh it, it's crazy what i was thinking was like you know all this like these very oddly specific scientific instruments that they use in any of these shows like it's not like they're mass produced so they're extremely expensive like how many times do people need a shark bite barometer pressurizer test or whatever it is what if the shark just no, like the name. took you it got, and fucking it. That's, swam that's away? The right name. I sh- it might as well be. Fuck. What if a shark? Just like, what if, what if the shark away? just bites it yeah. and then swam away? Fucking, you don't gone. fast those things, sir. He could be a hundred oh, yeah. miles away. And I thought that's what was going to happen because Pontius drops it at one point, and I'm, we're just like, okay, right. I guess we're not getting that thing back. Like, I'm not going to go get it. Are you fucking kidding me? And our scientist buddy kind of let me down here. You, he was even trying to ham shit up. He's like, wow, 500 pounds per square inch. I didn't expect that. And Pontius yeah, yeah. is like, well, there was two fucking sharks on the thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's what I was thinking. I'm like, is this guy going to try and sell it when there's two <laughs> sharks like, biting and he's going to take the highest reading? And I'm glad Chris at least had like the, the foresight to like yeah. call him out on that, you know? Yeah. Because I, I feel like it's hard for the jackass guys to not full send, you know what I mean? To, 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 right. to, to really tone it down. But I'm sure there was a lot of money thrown at them for yeah. this. Uh, it gets them a lot of a wider audience. You know, they're trying to strike while the iron's hot. And this might be the first time I've ever seen any of them really do anything that mm. it just, it, it down, like it, and, they, they kind of conceded little bored. to people. They, they did. They yeah, kind of exactly. looked a little bored to me on set, especially, especially Knoxville. Um, you know, like, like, especially starting out with something sh- like that's up here. Like you're showing video of someone getting attacked by a shark and I'm like, oh, I don't even know. And then it just gets like less and less significant as, as it goes on. There are a couple more funny moments in this and, and we'll get to them. But, um, you know, I go from watching that first scene. And you see, like, I was almost surprised at how much of Poopy's hand they showed torn apart, bleeding. Yeah. It was gross. Like it was making me feel sick. But. After this sketch or this stunt, the Dragon Slayer, it cuts to commercial and there's a commercial for Dr. Pimple Popper. And that was actually the grossest moment of my viewing experience of Shark Week. It was so fucking gross. It was disgusting. I follow her on Instagram. And also, you didn't spend the extra two dollars to get it ad free. No, I I use my free trial. (laughs) It's, yeah, I know, but that's why it's, it's a free trial, anyways. Why didn't you choose the six ninety nine? I only one? had one option. I only had one option for the for the free seven days. Ah, weird, weird indeed, guys, weird indeed. And uh, I guess there's nothing weirder than uh, stepping into a small tank with a, an electric cucumber. Um, <laughs> it's basically what's going to happen next. Did you know that sharks can sense their prey through electrical fields? Yes, I didn't know that. Of course, we all knew they could smell. They could hear pretty good under there, but electrical fields, that's a new one. That's why we're going to test out exactly what an electric field can do underwater. Wee Man jumps in the tank, gives the electric eel a little kick, and uh, we have a little fun here. Now, I didn't know this, but apparently electric eels, they use this tactic to shock and kill baby sharks. That's fucking crazy. That? Baby bull sharks. That's fucking crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because baby bull sharks, they, so bull sharks are like the one sharks that can like live in brackish water they can live in both fresh water or salt water i can't remember the exact name of it like it's, it's brackish. brackish is like Bra- the in-between yeah, no, that, that's the in-between but like they could actually so in the amazon is basically the nursing grounds for baby bull sharks so the mothers will give birth them up in the rivers so there's less predators for them and they could feed off all the small fish in the amazon and then when they grow up and become juveniles they move out of the amazon and they go out into the ocean they've just been finding this out recently like that's that's how these they're, they're getting big like that in that area but that's also where like those like crazy electric eels are. So it's just funny how nature works in that sense where it's like regardless of where it is in the world or the different things that are adapted, other animals are going to adapt strategies that could help them or hurt. Sometimes them. you try to cross territory, you run into an electric fence. Sometimes you try to cross territory, you run into an electric eel. And that's just nature for you. That's, that's just the, I feel the like, things uh, you learn. 
The things you learn, just like on Shark Week here, just like we learned. And I swear, when, when Wee Man jumped out of there and he said he felt it through his hole and he was kind of pointing at his tits, I thought he was going to say, I felt it in my boobies. <laughs> but he said he felt it through his whole body. He kind of had his arms up there. But yeah, I can imagine. It's like, um, as Pontia says, a really powerful electric fence. It's like the most powerful you've ever felt. I wanted to ask you guys, because I grew up in a rural area, uh-huh. so we had a, access to electric fences. You guys ever touch one before? You ever grab on? Uh, no, no, I, no I haven't, Jay. And you I, can, I don't have much experience with electricity. And you can tell the it truth, Jay. Out. You weren't touching your neighbor's fence. It was your parents fencing you into your basement. And that's okay. That's fine. We all grew up with different uh, different disciplinary structures. Is that what, is that what, the, is that what like, the emo goth cowboys do instead of cutting? They just <laughs> yeah. go and they touch the fucking electric wire fences. Around, yeah. <laughs> No, I'll, tell, I'll do you guys one better. I I uh I had to take a piss, so I did the old piss on the electric fence. Don't do oh. that. That's uh, it'll travel up the stream and it'll get you right in the ball. Did it? Because the they tested that on MythBusters. Uh, a common uh, trend of this show is bringing up MythBusters, and and they said that it didn't work. I think they did it wrong. Oh, were they close enough? Yeah, was the Jay's stream unbroken? Uh, I don't know. It depends. Maybe it depends on how healthy your prostate is. That's a good point. Think yeah, about that Mike. <laughs> that's that's a good point. That's maybe, maybe uh, uh, Jamie Heineman doesn't look like the guy with the healthiest prostate. Actually, now that I think about it, scientifically, it makes sense to me. I fuck with the myth. No, what they saying, said like, is that it, 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 although it looks like a constant stream, it's always broken up. In in nah, uh, that's just the prostate. That's just the prostate. Yeah. The prostate. That's the prostate. It's a gotta, prostate issue. They should have uh, got me in there, a healthy young fifteen-year-old uh, <laughs> kid go piss on that fence. Yeah, because that's I, what we want to see on primetime television: is fifteen-year-old kids peeing. That's <laughs> that's just normal. That's normal. I got a fear of pissing in Who public just said bathrooms that, said that? because the uh, <laughs> splashback is just too much, Mikey. It's just too much. No, yeah, I, Splash, I can't splashbacks wear white at a bad. urinal. Is all I'm saying. I never would. Uh, did you guys laugh when you saw Wee Man dressed as the little baby bull shark? I thought that was a fucking I loved adorable. It so much. This, it this was, was my favorite. So stunt cute. of of the uh, of the episode i think um i my favorite line from it was i pretty sure it was pontius because it i just agreed with it so much it's it's like the worst part about electric eels is how creepy they yes were. like it doesn't really matter creepy. that they shock the shit out of you and they could fucking really fuck you up it's the creepiness is that's worse than anything <laughs> else it's like snakes in general like yeah. i don't care if they're poisonous not poisonous could hurt me cannot they just if you don't have legs I don't fucking like, you You know, like (laughs) you shouldn't be able to move if you just slither. Like if that's how you move, fuck that. Yeah, it it, it feels it feels disgusting. Like it it, it, when (laughs) the one thing I do believe about the Bible is 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 the the light in which they cast snakes. Fuck those things. I don't like them. Mm -hmm. They can they can they can go fuck themselves. By the way, the hunters shout out to Joey Greco, the snake expert, who's a big listener of ours. Oh, is he a snake expert? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I I, can't, I I have them on my personal Instagram as well, and I kept like you know when people show up on your feeds, especially when it's like new people. I'm like, dude, I'm like you're killing me over here. Like I hate snakes. Every time I go, I click on the stories. It just keeps doing these snake pictures, and I have nightmares at night. I think I so uh, I yeah. Think he's, uh, I'm pretty sure he literally works with snakes. And he uh, just turned forty, actually. So happy uh, happy birthday or belated birthday oh, happy to, birthday, uh, to birthday, Joey, dude. Uh, uh, no, but it's great. I, you know, I love a stunt with an electric eel, a literal Pokemon. Uh, those things are are disgusting. Yeah. And fascinating. That's what you think about? Oh yeah, I, I always think of the fucking eel from Super Mario sixty four. Oh yeah, you know, and the pirate oh, ship. Yeah. Yes. That's what, that's what I think, but that fucking face. Take the star man. off the eel's tail. Nightmare that's fuel. a fucking mission and a half. That's how it is. That son of a bitch. Uh, but listen, we got to get rolling. Just like uh, Jeff says, we were not on this last sketch. We man, get back in the tub. Classic. Love that <laughs> we, that's that's. A, I love time. that. I love that. It's so common now that Jeff will fuck with them and say that they need need to get another shot. Like it's just so commonplace now. And sometimes they're they're willing. You know what that is to me? That's like when you go to see a band play and they walk off stage and everyone knows they're going to come back on for an encore. It's like they know Jeff is going to ask for another take, and you're just going to have to grin and bear it and do it. Um, I was I was kind of hoping they'd bring though Tyler the Creator on to tell us whether or not this was more. Of an intense shock than the piano bench one. That would have been nice. <laughs> that would have been sick. <laughs> but, so but, we got to overpower a shark sense with electricity here. Yes. And dark sharks. Shark is going <laughs> to shart. Dark shark. Sorry. That is funny though. <laughs> I did not do that on purpose. In fact, 
Why are we not calling this Shark Week? I mean, that was, there was a missed opportunity right there. Uh, Dark Shark is going to take a turn here, and I love how he calls himself Dark Goldfish because he's feeling a little scared today. But uh, I love that. Little, I little missed that. Of, I didn't even catch that. That's a little bit of personality coming out there. I love it. Uh, but hey, he, as Knoxville says, he might get a little skittish or scared, but he always does shit that he says he's going to do. So you know he's in for this one. We've got a glass bottom boat for Dark Shark here, so he can see right out underneath him when he's floating out there. And he's going to wear an electric shark repelling device. Now, I knew what they were doing long before they got him in that goddamn boat. <laughs> Dark Shark, why didn't you listen to our podcast? Season one, baby, we could have warned you about this. We could have warned you, is all I'm saying. Uh, when you put anything on your neck that has the power of electricity... What are you doing, man? Oh, yeah, Rick. Just, it it happened to Rick Cossack first, right? And he uh, he was the the guinea pig for for those shocks. Um, yeah, but I think if they were going to get anybody, it had to be him because I feel like he's going to be the most removed from the history. So it makes sense that they you know got him in there, right? And but what I love though oh, he, is he that learned. they're finally willing to prank Dark Shark because they were so yeah, afraid same of with him. Me. There you go. And yeah. in like I I think if this were during the filming of Jackass Forever. And you said to Johnny Knoxville, like, hey, listen, Johnny, you've never swam with sharks. Like, you got to swim with sharks. He would be like, okay, fine. I guess I have to do it. But if you said you have to go swim with Dark Shark, he'd be like, I've done a lot of things in my life. I don't think I'm ready to do that just yet. Like, even Johnny was fucking petrified of Dark Shark in, in uh, Jackass Forever. Well, what, when I saw, like, you know, when the intro is rolling and I see the cast members that are actually in this, the amount of excitement at the prospect of dark shark who is scared of anything that's not from the hood <laughs> like you know what that's, i mean like if it's like if it if he's scared of, he's probably scared of squirrels yeah. you know what i mean so to see him in the fucking ocean with fucking sharks i was like this is like i he was the person i was most excited to see because it, there's going to be so much comedic gold i was so excited about all these different things but it, it again it just didn't hit the mark it's the first time i've ever seen him on screen where like it just, it, I don't think it was scary enough. Like, it was funny as reaction. But again, like, the cameras are panning and they're like, oh, look at all those sharks. And you see him looking around. And he's like, there's no sharks around. Like, they were hamming this whole thing up. Like, there might have been one shark that swam under a glass bottom boat. Like, whoop do you fucking do? But that still would be funny with Dark Shark normally. But it's almost like he's kind of getting a little more used to this outside world, you know, of, the, of like outside of that area. And he's, and his, he's conquering his fears a little bit, which. It's good for him, but it takes away from the co the, like the comedic effect for I, me, yeah, I find, a little bit. Yeah, he's kind of developing his calluses. I think they're going to have to keep upping the ante a little bit uh, because, you know, when... when Which is like, going to be a fun journey. It's going to be a fun <laughs> journey. But, like, we saw this guy literally make amends with God on camera. Like, he's been through, he's been through some shit for the sake of jackass. I think we're going to have to keep upping and upping and upping to, to kind of get those reactions to continue to come from them. Um like in my mind now, if he dies, he's already made amends. Like he's okay. He's going to whatever place he thinks he's going to go to. He's happy. So he's not as afraid anymore, but it's going I, to the schoolyard, baby going to the schoolyard. I, I don't know. School, I, he's a school schoolyard crit. Oh, okay. Okay. Or was okay. You know, just chill, chilling with the homies, chilling with the I homies. Do some research. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Look at you. Look yeah. at Chris, Chris, the, just the, the consummate expert on all things, uh, uh, this, this episode. It's nice. I know gangs and sharks. <laughs> Basically, the only two things I know anything about. Well, you're describing half the plot of West Side Story, Chris. So <laughs> I've never seen the I, Jets I don't and know. the Sharks. I, I, no, okay. Oh, well, no. leave it. Leave, yeah. This is this. I'm, is, I'm not gay, Mike. Yeah, I don't watch that shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is the pinnacle of <laughs> it's like a, it's a musical. Yours and my that doesn't defend. What are you talking? You can't just that, this, <laughs> that is the the pinnacle of your and my relationship, Chris. Is that you just give some like some insight into like uh uh like a, a really. Uh, a deep cut of gang knowledge and i relate it to a musical <laughs> that's like how he, that's that's the the weird intersection of our forms of knowledge but i loved in this one they get him to go into what they call the ss dark shark and the and he's more afraid to just <laughs> he's more afraid to just get into the boat the glass bottom <laughs> boat than to to swim with the sharks like he's petrified of this thing but that's not where the danger is the danger is supposed to be everything that's that's around him i i thought we initially started with some pretty decent reactions from him in that way oh yeah, yeah. for sure the throw me a weapon that was throw classic. me a weapon was oh, great throw me a weapon that was a great line <laughs> i love it i gotta have I, I just guys, love though. the guy yeah did you guys think when they put the collar on him send him out into the boat did you think they were going to give him the control or that they were going to have the control back on the boat 
Well, I because I, I honestly, I, this is probably just me focusing too much on like taking my notes and and the minute to minute because you know watching Jackass for this podcast is like a slightly different experience uh, than than watching it just for leisure. But I didn't pick up on the fact that he was going to be shocked until he was in the boat. Oh, okay. that's, oh, d- no, that's when they turned to the camera and Wee Man's like, I've got the control. So I was like, it, that worked so well on me. I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. See, I was I was confused about that, too. It looked like they gave it to him and he was no, pressing no. So the button. He, he, so he has a button that was the, for this, the thing on his leg was supposed to be in the water. So it would send the electromagnetic field so that was to scare away one. the sharks. But okay. the thing that that was measuring his vitals or whatever on his collar was what Wee Man had the controller for. So whenever he pushed the button, Wee Man would also push the button. So he thought it was rigged wrong, and he thought right. he's trying to get the shark. I, I think the the idea of it was to get him so freaked out about the sharks there that he has to decide whether or not he wants to shock himself <laughs> or scare the sharks away. But I just don't think there was enough action yeah, going Jay, on for him to get to that. Moment. You, you, you may have sense. missed Jade. Like that, that actually was a shark repellent too. In there, it wasn't the whole stunt mm-hmm. wasn't just to get him to shock himself. It, they're like they were testing oh, yeah, they out the shark the bottom, repellent, right? which apparently yeah. works, which is fucking cool. I, I like to know that there are ways to defend ourselves from these beasts of the ocean. Just to be yeah, like dart shark, get someone to toss you a Glock. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just shooting the sharks from up there. The uh, <laughs> Die, oh, the image of him. I don't think Discovery would sign off on that one, unfortunately. Honestly, <laughs> though, but if they did, they'd sell a lot more uh, uh, subscriptions to, to to Discovery Plus. I can almost guarantee you that. Um, uh, the the image of him when he gets shocked like the first time before they cut for commercial in this when he's just fucking he he's it's like he's he's gripping the the jackass crew like in in the in the tarantula oh. bit again like he's got the same look on him when he's just twisting and like just look probably the strongest good- human being on the planet. The strongest yeah. human being on the planet. And you know what's funny is when it showed that image of him with with like gripping, like pressing the button and gripping and cringing and yelling at the same time. I was like, man, what does that image remind me of? I feel like I've seen that somewhere on the Internet. And then I remembered it's literally the last time I saw him do something like that. It just left that much of an impression on me. It was great. Totally. Yep. And uh, this whole sketch, seeing Dark Shark getting in there and having a having a part, just overall, I'm just happy to see they are including him more. You know, he's he's like a cast member now because when we I saw think him in the movie, is. I kind of thought, oh, he's just going to be here for this movie because he's supporting his son. But the fact that he's just there now is really cool. <laughs> he's supporting <laughs> his son, just like it's a fucking baseball game. <laughs> you don't just show up yeah. to the set well, of Jackass like, no, dude, like us, yelling at the exactly umps of Jackass. Like, that's not how no, this no, works. No. Think about it like well, this, he could have been like think a- about it like this because like your son gets this golden ass opportunity to do this thing and then you know you you ask your dad to come in what are you gonna do are you gonna like let your son be more of a badass than you you're the fucking father you can't let your son show you up so if he's gonna have you on this show you better fucking stick around and show him up and no, i of think course. that's what he's doing you know like and he's gotta, doing a good job at it he is i God mean damn, he's is he I, ever. I think though he's kind of admitted the fact that he isn't as badass at his son because he's saying now he's saying like and we'll see this later on in the episode as well probably not this episode because i think we're gonna uh, cap off with this stunt that we're talking about right here in in dark sharks thing uh, just for this episode but he says later on that uh uh his son is way more badass than him at least when it comes to these stunts yeah. uh, you know when when he's in there doing the shark disco and it's it's cool to see that sort of passing of the baton it's it's nice yeah i i don't buy it he fucking takes us he'll take him back and fucking give him a good old fucking <laughs> i'll show you who's boss you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, man. I don't know. I like the dynamic, though. I like that those two are, are there together because, like, that's never existed on this show before. It's yeah. like a strange new thing that we've just never seen. So it's cool, how how you know? good would it feel to be Jasper? You know, you have this dad who's like a badass. You know, like he's like a street legend. He's done his stuff. He's had lived a really hard life. You know, doing what he could do. You grow up. You kind of make some. It's isn't it like every son's dream to like get their father's approval, but then he kind of takes it to another level and like gets his approval but then also gets him on a show and turns his dad into a celebrity in his own right or maybe even a bigger celebrity should we be charging you an hourly rate to get to get you talking about this stuff (laughs) the what you're just living vicariously through jasper right now talking about getting your dad's approval it's a therapy joke you want to wipe that tear from your eyes what are you doing it's it 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 goes see him red again it digs deep you know (laughs) i have i've heard it once i've heard it once there you go yeah yeah. yeah yeah it was when he was talking to himself in the mirror or and you were just standing outside waiting for his attention no ironically it was the one time i was like reaching out to be like i needed that like good old like firm like 
you're being lazy, fucking pick your shit up, get your shit together, like you could like you're fucking wasting your talent type talk. And he's like, No matter what anyone told you, or like no matter what you're thinking, like you made it this far, that's something to be proud of. I was like, fuck, I didn't even want that, but it felt pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. Well, boys, for this episode. <laughs> you thought you were making a joke, Mikey. This really runs deep. <laughs> no, I can tell. I can I'm just gonna let you go with it. Yeah. For this for this episode, boys, I gotta ask, I mean, do we even do an MVP? Because I think we're all just gonna say the same guy, right? I don't know. I don't know that we are. I, don't I think we should do I our. I think we this? should do our MVPs and LVPs. Actually, uh, Jay, but I'm curious this? to see who you think the the runaway favorite is. Do you just you guys just want to say it on the count of three? I think we all got to pick the same guy. I don't. I don't think we Chris do. Knows what's I, up. I don't. I have no idea who I'm picking are you right serious? now. Serious? Okay, yeah. fine. We don't have to. You don't have to fucking whip it out on three. It's fine. I can. I can be gentle. Um, but. Uh, it's fucking Mike, guys. It's it's got to be Mike. Ah, nice. Ooh, the fucking guy who saved Poopy's life. Like Poopy's might not even be here today had that guy not been there. And to see him in action, fucking backflippy do over here into the into the water and like evading sharks and shit, and then rocket boosting out of there. Like it was a it was a it was an event. I'm glad that guy was there. And technically, you could say he was part of Shark Week 1.0. So maybe it doesn't count. That's where I was going. But you can eat my dick and my balls. That's my answer. <laughs> MVP cool. Mike. Right. That's the reason why I didn't think of it because I was I was thinking that was like a recap for what happened in the other one. This time I would like I'm saying it's 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 there wasn't so much for me to grasp on you know what i mean i i i think i i think i gotta go with pontius just because his overall presence you could tell like mikey was saying i didn't realize he was a producer of this and, and yada yada so like even you know when he's talking with poopies he's like there to kind of console him but still have fun like you could tell he was like very knowledgeable still maintaining his funniness I loved when he did his little turnaround after he was getting knighted with the Barracuda thing for the butt poke and everybody just laughs. Like, but it was it we're seeing this growth in Pontius where he's like the the old wise man, yet still the funny goofy guy. And it's like, I don't know, I just really enjoyed his presence in in this. Yeah. Uh, mine's actually the same. I'm I'm going with Chris Pontius as well. I think he was in the background, the obvious and, choice, Jay, and in the and in the water <laughs> of, of just about every like he's he was there all the time. Uh, uh, he lent a a feeling of gravity to Poopy's uh, shark bite that I think was really necessary for this one because Johnny Knoxville wasn't willing to do that uh, and Steve-O wasn't there to do it. We all know how Steve-O feels about it. Pontius was there to, to lend a little bit of humanity towards it, to be in a stunt his, in himself and to provide some context for the electric eel. It seemed like he was just always there kind of like moving pieces around in a way, like you said, Chris, where it felt like he was taking more of like a, a producer role or like a man behind the curtain kind of role. Mentor like that. or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jay, what about your LVP? Hmm. Now I'm still having trouble getting this one. Give me another minute and come back to me because I'm just still not quite sure. Okay. Sounds good. Chris, what about you? My, my LVP for this was jackass as a whole. Okay. Ooh. Ouch. I think this is the only time I could honestly ever say in my life. I watched anything from jackass and was like, I would have rather been watching something else. Like I was like, why, why am I wasting my time watching this shark week when, you know, so it's, I know that's almost a summary of everything in general, but it's hard for me to pick on anything. Like, you know, it's like, it just, it all just didn't really come together for me. You know what I mean? Especially, I don't know if you guys watched the first one. The first one was legit, really fucking yeah. good. It's, it is just such a, it's like, yeah, you, you guys know what I'm saying. No, no, I, I do. I think, I think that's saying. great. I was, I was gonna, I was thinking about having that as a, uh, as, as, the the final kind of LVP after after the next episode and look there are good moments in it but I agree with you man I, I think that this was a little bit disappointing uh, uh you know I was so excited to have nine o'clock on a Sunday night cap off the weekend with an hour hanging out with with the buddies aka the Jackass crew watching Jackass and and I didn't get it and that was that was a little bit unfortunate and I think maybe part of that has to do with my LVP which is Johnny Knoxville. I think that everything felt a little bit hammed up. He felt a little bit detached in this one. And, and I think he probably had a lot to do with choosing the crew, choosing the stunts, trying to add a little bit more flavor to it. It just felt like even in his interstitials or, or his introductions, he was a little bit not there. He was, he was kind of phoning it in a little bit. And I've never really seen him do Dude, that. It's funny you say that. It, so you, you, 
then watch the first one because he literally phones in every single interstitial. No way. At least this time he's actually there. They did like webcams where he's like, I got an assignment for you guys. Da, 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 da. It was like, oh, that's but it was no like, good. because it was the first time you saw it. It's like, this was much better Compared in terms to. of that because he actually was there. But I, I, I don't think they realized how big it was going to be last year yeah. and they didn't have yeah. all this other stuff going on. So they needed to make a big production. But because of the drama that happened with Poopies, I think they're, I, I don't blame the jackass guys for it. I, I blame the, the big networks. Yeah. Like they had a leash on them and they're not used to having a leash. And I just don't like seeing it. I don't like seeing that kind of mold starting. Yeah, I hear you. Know, you. It's like, that's why they left. That's, that's why they left MTV after the most successful show. One of the most successful shows they've ever had. They're like, we're not going to put out jackass if it's not the way we want to do it. True. And then that's when they made the movie. So, I mean, I hope it's not just. You know, and you know what? If it is at the point where they're later on in life and they're like, fuck it, man, we need some money. Like, we want to retire. We've been beating ourselves up. Good for them. I, I don't mind a little bit of that. I just think, I hope they have a succession plan for people to come in and do it a little bit differently. And and we'll see. You know, again, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm, I'm done with Jackass based on this one hour special that isn't even like primarily Jackass branded. It's Shark Week branded. But, but you know, I agree. You know, there, there, there's a little, let's say this. There's a little blood in the water, and I'm getting a little bit nervous. Jay Wood, Sierra, LVP. LVP. I think it's got to be the latex uh, shark head from the bite power simulator. <laughs> I mean, where the fuck does that head go from here? I mean, you know it's just going to end up as the top half of some Frankenstein sex doll and some guy's going to bid it on eBay, and that's where it's going. I can Somebody's imagine a worse life. That beautiful set of teeth. I can imagine and, a worse uh, life. I... Ch- I'm just feel bad for it. It's all I'm saying. It's a nice prop. It deserves better. I, I think that's a pretty it, never mind better. I think that gets what it deserves. It's kind of you know don't 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 kick <laughs> it. Remi- uh, it. It reminded me of my fa- like I think honestly the funniest joke I've ever seen in any TV show ever was when <laughs> in uh, Family Guy when uh, Quagmire like he dies he gets reincarnated as a condom. He's like yeah oh, all right. right and then the guy turns around it's another guy and he's like no 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 no. <laughs> We've resorted oh, to telling the jokes from other TV shows on this podcast. I just, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Cut it out. No, it's too thought, Oh, by the way, uh, oh, for the listener too. Yeah. So when we were doing another episode, that the, what the when Mikey, when from? I wanted to cut it out and Mikey's like, no, I have the power and I'll cut it out. There was a point where he actually cut something out, even though he was saying we're live wire and he, because he has the power to do it. So like fucking he, he screwed up and he doesn't, you know, uh huh. Uh huh. You want to edit yeah. these instead, Chris? Uh, let me tell you this. You know how qu- I ain't no nerd. You know how quickly you will fix your internet issues when you have to edit these podcasts. Dude, it's so funny for a listener. Mikey has me set up. <laughs> my computer broke. He got got me a computer. I wouldn't even use it. My 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 uh, camera was bad. He got me like a tripod with a camera thing. First of all, this microphone he gave to me, which is kind of broken now. He's given me an adapter for another computer. And I still don't really put anything together. Yeah, cause... it's really fucking frustrating. <laughs> this is like, well, I, I'm glad we're airing this out here. It's payback. For what? Years of abuse. Being my younger and, brother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, that I understand. <laughs> and getting dad's approval. Over That's me. true. That's true. <laughs> it, I, remember, I remember, Chris, I remember Chris, Chris when 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 dad did come just up rolled to you. over. And, and dad and dad said uh, and dad said uh, uh, Chris I do I do want to tell you uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say something to you and you're like okay and dad says uh, I'm proud of you I don't say it enough but I think you've done great in your life is what I want you to tell Mikey I, I think of him do you think you can transfer that that message over for him or are you taking notes <laughs> dude you want to hear some reverse some real good reverse psychology okay. he's he, like, <laughs> He'd be like, he'll like play shit off. Like, he'd be like, I feel like you could be more successful than Mikey, but you just don't apply yourself. He like does these like double fucking disses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's just like, it's like, whoa, who, who, who got off worse there? Who got off better there? You know, <laughs> he's a master psychologist. Never hit me once in my life. And I'm terrified of the fucking man. <laughs> that is pure power there. You just get a stern. When he fucking got serious, I was like, oh my God, I'll do it. Like, it's like when you're a kid, and you're like. When they're like you're grounded like me nowadays i'd be like what the fuck are you gonna do i'm going where the fuck i want to yeah. go and you know but when you're a kid you're sitting there you're like if you have like a dad that has that fucking power it's like you're grounded no i don't want that look and you're like holy shit he's fucking serious <laughs> what the fuck was he ever gonna do he would never hit us he was gonna uh uh not tell you he was proud of you that's that's what he was gonna do <sighs> Gotta learn those tactics if I ever again. <laughs> and on I'm that proud note, you, Dad. I, I love you. 
before this gets a little too wet over here, I think we should let her go. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we're going to come back for a part two next week to wrap up Shark Week 2.0. And of course, if you want to tell us what you thought of Shark Week thus far, you can find us at Jackass Pod on Instagram and Twitter. And let us know how you're doing. And now, Vine, not Vine. What's that? Chick called TikTok. TikTok. You did this last week, too. <laughs> I. I <laughs> Dude, I don't want. Yeah, it's fine, dude. But that thing's blowing up, man. That shit's awesome. You guys yeah. like really want to keep us motivated. Yeah, Seriously, Vine's gonna be share huge. like every time the fucking jackass members post something and you're on their pages, fucking tag us in their comments. Like get them to fucking notice us. Get them like out there because if that shit happens, we never know what could happen with uh, us getting involved. Maybe getting people on the show to fucking have some insight or giving you know like. We're already bouncing some ideas off some people, which is pretty cool. But like, if you guys get this active community going, it pumps us up. We're going to have more content. And the better content that we could create is if we get the attention more from these guys and they're showing that we are a bigger force than, you, you know, you know what I mean? So fucking smash that like button. <laughs> this, I can't believe that, I just that, said that's that. A, that's a great you way, Chris, it, yeah. to uh, to really put a bullet on what you're saying. Do you, do you know what I mean? This whole like five minute diatribe. And <sighs> you, do you know what I mean? My brain gets going so fast. I spit out all my thoughts and then I just don't have a conclusion. Right. Like, I'm like, oh Dude, shit, what do I say now? You know, conclusion. That, that was a I good understand. rant, though. It meant a lot. Nah, it from it the did, heart. Did. That, was, that was well done, Chris. I appreciate it. <laughs> and everything he said is absolutely true. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yes, I do. I know what you mean. And uh, I hope you all know what we mean. And uh, somebody get on Twitter and tell Discovery that uh, we've got the next, we've got next year's shark expert right here. <laughs> and his name. Is Mikey Aaronworth. Goodbye, Thank you everybody. Very much, Jay. Goodbye, everybody. And uh, what did I say? Something wrong there? I'm not even doing the outro. <laughs> Fuck Are you, you going to do part two next week? Doesn't mean to say anyone's Are ever said to come me. back for. Part you, two I was so week. hyped up. Yeah, yeah I'll come back, back for part right. two just so I could prove that I am. We'll patch it up. Then. The Aaronworth Shark we'll Master. Patch it up then. All right. All right. Huh? So what are you guys doing after this? Uh, editing this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I'm Chris Aaronworth. Bye. I'm Jason Wellwood. <laughs> Bye. I'm Mikey Aaronworth. And this has been Jackass. Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. Get into it!